As web developers, have you ever battled with forms, validation, just trying to collect information? Every major website has some sort of forms. When you're dealing with WordPress, one of the things that can make your life a lot easier is WP Forms. Don't make your life harder than it has to be. If you guys are using WordPress for your website, check out wpforms.com forward slash Chris Hawks. There's a 50% discount and it will make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to forms and validation. Hey guys, this video is going to be the top five PHP projects to learn in 2020. And uh, PHP is a really popular open source language that is built for scripting web pages. Some of the biggest websites that use PHP include Facebook, Yahoo, Wikipedia, WordPress, which powers like 25% of the web even to this day, and also MailChimp. I, I use that as my newsletter, by the way. So if you guys check that out, the link is in the description tab below to sign up for my newsletter on my website. But I use MailChimp for that. Uh, so PHP actually powers a lot of the web. It works very well with uh, technologies for servers like Apache or Nginx. And it's, um, it's very cheap to also host your applications. Uh, I run PHP on my Linode website, but it, whether you're using a shared host, like pretty much all hosting providers out there will support PHP. So that's one of the most popular reasons why people use it. Um, however, the, the usage of PHP is mostly restricted to, to just web development. So that's really where PHP shines. All right, so number five on this list is going to go to Composer. Composer is a dependency manager for PHP. In the old school days, we used to use Pear, and now we're using Composer for everything. So whatever sort of modern PHP project you're trying to build, you want to use Composer to keep track of all your dependencies. So for those of you who are not familiar with package manager tools, basically every language and web framework out there has some sort of package manager with Node, we're using NPM or Yarn. With Python, it's pip or now pip environment. With C Sharp, it's NuGet. With Rust, it's Cargo. Um, I could go on and on, but they all have their dependency managers that allow a project to keep track of individual pieces that that project needs in order to run. And Composer does a much better job than Pear used to do with the PHP community. So uh, the entire community has moved over to it. So anyway, for anybody who hasn't used Composer, make sure you're using it for your next PHP project. All right, number four is going to go to Slim. Slim is a PHP micro framework, and it allows you to build RESTful APIs like in, in a very quick way. So you can build RESTful APIs with larger web frameworks if you wanted to, but some of the more modern frameworks that are springing up these days are built for just simple JSON data back and forth, you know, it first like typical single page applications that are running Vue, Angular, React on the client, uh, and just communicating with that server to get data as quickly as possible. So you don't really need a, a whole bloated framework in many cases to deliver data to and from the client application. And for those, uh, those applications that don't need that, that um, really just don't need all the features of a full stack framework like something like Django or ASP.NET or something like that, then micro frameworks are the direction that you want to go in. And for that reason, Slim is, is number one. Now, I should have mentioned that there are other frameworks out there that are competing with Slim. Lumen is, is one that's based off of the Laravel framework. And uh, there's a couple others that are out there as well. One did just recently get deprecated in, in favor of just going back to Symfony. So again, you can use larger web frameworks to build microservice APIs, uh, but there are these newer frameworks that are cropping up just to get things rolling a little bit quicker and easier. All right, so number three is going to be PHP EXT Wasm or extension Wasm. And Wasm is a uh, machine code language that is uh, it, it's WebAssembly bytecode. So WebAssembly is a new language which is sort of promising to supplement and or replace JavaScript at some point in the future, although they say not replace JavaScript, but uh, it's certainly a supplemental thing. WebAssembly code can run uh, nearly three times as fast as JavaScript, so browsers are pretty much capable, uh, you know, capped out as far as what they can do and what they can handle. So WebAssembly is a bunch of companies like Google, Amazon, Apple, all these companies have come together to come up with a new standard that can run in the browser to speed things up. 
And that's going to be helpful for augmented reality, virtual reality. Um, and as we get games in browsers and we start playing more browser-based games, maybe even on our phones, uh, WebAssembly is going to do a lot for us in order to get us um, much more futuristic. And to date, um, languages are still having a hard time, I think, you know, adapting over to WebAssembly. So there's different frameworks that are available out there, like Blazor is one for .NET code that can take C Sharp and make that run in uh, the browser. This is PHP's version of that. And then obviously Rust is doing a lot of work in regards to um, WebAssembly as well. But uh, anyway, guys, you guys want to check out WebAssembly, I would definitely recommend you read up on it because it's going to be one of those more futuristic things, although I do think we're years away from that being uh, a common development task. All right, so number two is Idea Space, and this is a virtual reality component to PHP, which allows you to easily implement uh, virtual reality type influence into your website. So. That can typically be pretty difficult to do when you're dealing with WebGL and things like that. Uh, this is a framework that's built around PHP that allows you to have different types of uh, add-ons and plugins that you can easily incorporate into your website. Things like 360-degree photo tours uh, and just gaming overall and virtual reality type stuff. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. These are different themes that you can just simply add on to your PHP website without having to do a bunch of additional work. Some of these things do cost money because it's a for-profit company, so you can see that they're selling this plugin for $50, but they're essentially saying you get started with the IdeaSpace VR uh, platform that runs on PHP, then you can buy these plugins and have a very interactive type website. Here you can see that they're using the Oculus controllers, and that's a lot of code and setup that you're not going to have to do yourself. And Virtual reality is still gaining a lot of traction. I think it's something that's really popular with the younger crowd. And I personally like it myself. I think that eventually we're going to have probably more augmented reality type experiences with websites that we visit. But for right now, um, you know, virtual reality is still pretty dominant. I think the problem with virtual reality when you compare it to augmented reality is the fact that we have to submerse ourselves into a virtual reality world. And it really kind of take social networking and all this stuff a, a bit further by, you know, you put on your headset and you're completely drowned out from the rest of the world, which probably isn't good for human interaction all that much. Um, and augmented reality is probably going to be something more like Google Glass in the future, even though that was a pretty big failure. Something like that where, you know, we're going to have um, just, you know, obviously digital virtual reality type stuff in a real world. All right, guys. And last but not least, number one on this list is going to be Laravel. Laravel is the web framework that is by far the most popular web framework for PHP. You could argue WordPress, but WordPress is a, more of a content management system, and Laravel is like something that you would use to create something like WordPress. So Laravel is the tool, the framework tool, to build any sort of website framework type thing you want to build. WordPress is kind of already very opinionated type of web, web application that's built for blogging and easy plug-and-play uh, to modify and change your website. So that doesn't give you overall as much freedom and flexibility as something like Laravel. And Laravel also has probably the most corporate support at this point. So when it comes down to building a web website, you're probably going to be using PHP to build a website. There are a few things you can do in PHP that is not web-related, but it's fairly limited. I mean, there's even gaming frameworks that you'll see that people have written in PHP, although they're not nobody's really using them um, so with that said like when it comes to the web like that's what people use php for and laravel is definitely dominating i would give uh, also a quick mention to symphony and code igniter those are two frameworks that have been around for a long time but they definitely don't seem to have the same level of traction as something like laravel but people are opinionated so a lot of people out there will say no i, I prefer symphony's way and other people are like no i like laravel's way a lot of people say Laravel is more like the Ruby on Rails uh, of PHP, which is uh, obviously Ruby's most popular web framework. And um, yeah, so there's there's some magic there that I think some people may not like. But all in all, uh, Laravel is definitely a strong framework that really contends with a lot of all the other major frameworks out there for all the other languages. And if you're looking for corporate jobs, you're probably going to have the most luck in Laravel as it's... Um, one of the, I think, the, the few frameworks that is continuing to grow in the PHP market. 
All right, guys, so that's my list for PHP in 2020. I wish you guys the best of luck in learning all those different frameworks. If you're trying to get PHP set up on Linode, make sure you guys check out my tutorials that I have on that. Um, and that'll get you started also on like WordPress, WooCommerce, if you want to do an e-commerce site. Uh, in addition to that, um, check out my CodeHawk website, which has the news uh, letter that, that I'm trying to get everybody to sign up for so I can get in contact with you guys outside of YouTube. And so far, I've already had several hundred people join to that. So uh, hopefully all my, my viewers can do that. And then if you guys could give me a thumbs up, a like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff helps me with the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate all the support. You guys have a good night. Bye.